Hello everyone, and I wanted to bring to your attention as we have been reporting for years on the different land grabs, on the different violations of unalienable rights of the people being violated by whether it be federal, state, local government entities, whether they be entering homes without a justifiable probable cause warrant or they're just doing signing statements in order to gain entry which is an unlawful form of the Fourth Amendment search and seizure. So I wanted to bring to your attention the Institute for Justice and I will tell you why. We the people, each and every one at the sound that hears the sound of my voice and everyone who kind of wonders what can I do? I can't some people are limited by transportation, some people are limited by uh, disabilities and unable to be able to actually get to the courts to be able to stand up in the courts to be courtroom observers. Everybody has a special spot in this world where they can help and you can help. And one of the ways that, in my personal opinion, to, to help protect the unalienable rights of we the people from all across our union is to make sure to stand up and speak out and when you find others are standing up and speaking out or they are taking these cases to the Supreme Court on issues that you know are truly um, issues that are constitutional violations in the first place we can actually reach out to the people who are fighting those cases and see if they're aware of other cases in order to help them win their cases which ultimately helps everyone else so the institute for justice i wanted to just kind of bring that to your attention because they have quite a lot of cases going on and they're all across the united states of america and they help individuals and uh businesses that are having their unalienable rights violated by over intrusive government um, local state and federal level most of the issues that they cover are going to be something to do with school choice economic liberty first amendment and private property now they do also deal with land issues which we're not going to get into in this specific instance because i am going to be covering uh, one of the cases that they are currently engaged in, one of the cases that I have um, has drawn my attention is the Pottstown, Pennsylvania rental inspection case. Pennsylvania tenants and landlord are challenging the unconstitutional inspection of homes. Pottstown, Pennsylvania has a rental inspection law that forces landlords and tenants to open their properties and homes to submit to intrusive inspections. This ordinance allows the government to enter the most intimate confines of a tenant's home, including bedrooms, bathrooms, kitchens, and closets in search of housing code violations, even when landlords and tenants object. Needless to say, some tenants do not want the government entering into the deeply personal spaces where information about their private lives may be visible. Ordinarily, when a person does not want the government to enter their home, they can request a warrant supported by some evidence that a violation of law has occurred. But in Pottstown, if a landlord and tenant request a warrant, the government can go to court and readily obtain an administrative warrant, a warrant that does not require any evidence that anything is wrong with the home. This program makes it easier for the government to get into the homes of ordinary law-abiding citizens than the homes of suspected criminals. And Pottstown's rental inspection program is not unique. Rental inspection programs have become increasingly common in Pennsylvania and across the country. These programs give the government the green light to conduct blanket searches of innocent people's homes without their consent and are an end run around the constitutional protections of for property rights. Fourth Amendment to the United States Constitution and Article 1, Section 8 of the Pennsylvania Constitution guarantee property rights and the right to privacy in the home. This is why the Institute for Justice has teamed up with the Pottstown landlord and his tenants to file a lawsuit challenging the government's use of administrative warrants to search the homes of ordinary people who do not want inspectors inside. 
Their lawsuit does not seek to prevent tenants from inviting inspectors inside if a problem with their home has gone unaddressed by their landlord. They have filed this lawsuit to stop the government from entering private property without truly voluntarily consent or a warrant that is based upon traditional probable cause. In Pottstown's rental inspection program, Pottstown first passed its rental inspection ordinance in 2002, and originally the ordinance called for inspections once every five years and upon a change in tenancy. In 2015, the borough amended its ordinance to require landlords and tenants to submit to mandatory inspections every two years. Under this ordinance, landlords are required to obtain rental licenses and to allow inspections at, quote, at reasonable times and upon reasonable notice, unquote, even if their tenants do not want the inspection. Pottstown ordinance gives the borough officials blanket authority to search anywhere in tenants' homes for housing code violations. There are no meaningful limitations on where the borough officials can search, and there are no safeguards on what they can share with law enforcement or other government officials. Inspectors can enter every room of the home and search for, among other things, whether the tenant is maintaining a tidy home or a clean kitchen. These inspections pry into tenants' most personal spaces, where information about their private lives, such as family relationships, personal belongings, health, political and religious affiliations, or romantic lives may be visible. If a landlord or tenant objects to the inspection, the borough inspectors can, without telling the landlord or tenant, obtain an administrative warrant to inspect the premises, and unlike traditional search warrants, administrative warrants are granted as a matter of course. For the borough to get an administrative warrant, it only needs to show that some, quote, standards, unquote, are in place to guide the inspection. It does not need to suspect something is wrong with the property, only that a certain amount of time has passed. The plaintiffs in this case are Steve Camburn, a Pottstown landlord, and two of his tenants, Dottie and Omar Rivera. Steve Camburn owns several properties in Pottstown. Steve is a model landlord who deeply cares about his tenants and their comfort and security. Steve does everything in his power to proactively address all maintenance and safety issues within the homes he rents. He frequently touches base with his tenants regarding the condition of their property, stays on call 24-7 in case there is a repair emergency, and responds to all service calls immediately. Steve, however, is unwilling to allow the borough to intrude into his tenants' homes without their consent. Dottie and Omar Rivera are Steve's tenants. They've lived in Pottstown their entire lives and have rented their home from Steve for the last five years. Their home is brimming with the personal touches that make a house a home. Dottie decorates the house as the seasons change with a menagerie of gourds and corn stalks for autumn garlands, trees, and lights for the holidays and pastel greenery for the warmth and renewal of spring. They've raised their children in this home and plan to live in it for as long as it is available to be rented. In late 2016, the borough notified Steve and the R Rivera's home was due for inspection. This was the first request Steve had received from the borough to inspect the Rivera's home since they moved in more than five years ago. Steve discussed the inspection with the Rivera's and they did not want the inspection. They are perfectly happy with the condition of their home and they would call Steve if they had any concerns. They believe an inspection would be extremely invasive and violate their family's privacy. Steve has respected their wishes and agreed to help them fight the inspection. Together they objected to the inspection and filed this lawsuit challenging the borough's use of administrative warrants to search tenants' homes. The Fourth Amendment's requirement of probable cause once served as a bulwark against the blanket government searches of private property. But in the 1967 case, Camara v. Municipal Court, the U.S. Supreme Court carved out a narrow exception to the probable cause requirement for administrative inspections. Officials still have to get a warrant to conduct these inspections, but under this interpretation of the federal constitution, they only need to show that there are, quote, reasonable legislative and administrative standards, unquote, in place in order to obtain a warrant. Under this interpretation, the government can enter people's homes so long as it has some standards in place that will guide the inspection. 
relying on Camara, Pennsylvania's intermediate court has blessed rental inspection programs in the face of landlords challenges under the Fourth Amendment and Article 1, Section 8 of the Pennsylvania Constitution. In these cases, the court has simply endorsed Camara without giving any serious consideration to the state constitutional question. This case is new and different for two reasons. First, it calls on Pennsylvania courts to rely on Pennsylvania's constitutions greater protection of private property rights. Second, it brings the tenant's perspective to the table. Until now, Pennsylvania courts have not considered, from the tenant's point of view, the threat these types of inspection programs point, pose to tenants' privacy in their homes. Article 1, Section 8 of the Pennsylvania Constitution guarantees the right to keep the government from unreasonably intruding upon private property. This lawsuit asks the court to declare Pottstown use of administrative warrants to inspect rental homes unconstitutional and to stop local officials from obtaining administrative warrants without traditional probable cause. More broadly, the lawsuit asserts that Pennsylvania Constitution provides greater search and seizure protections than the federal Constitution as it has been interpreted by the U.S. Supreme Court in Camara. Pennsylvania's warrant requirement is as old as the nation. The Pennsylvania Convention of Delegates shared by Benjamin Franklin inserted the warrant requirement into the original 1776 Pennsylvania Constitution, similar to the purpose of the Fourth Amendment's warrant requirement. The original purpose of this requirement was to abolish the British's use of general warrants, which permitted sweeping searches of colonists' homes and businesses based only upon a generalized suspicion. Steeped in this history, Pennsylvania courts have repeatedly interpreted Article 1, Section 8 to provide greater protection from unreasonable search and seizure than the Fourth Amendment. This lawsuit directly advances the property rights protections envisioned by the state constitution's framers. Today's administrative warrants bear a closer resemblance to the general warrants of Pennsylvania's early days than to the probable cause guarantee of Article 1, Section 8. That provision has a simple promise. If the government wants to get into your home without your consent, whether you rent it or own it, it needs a warrant backed by individualized probable cause. The time has come to re-examine Camara v. Municipal Court. A victory would protect Pennsylvania tenants and landlords from cities invading their privacy and property rights. This case is being litigated by IJ attorneys Megan Forbes and Rob Pacola. They will be assisted by the Pennsylvania attorney Mike Flattery of the Flattery Law Firm. As reported by the Columbus Dispatch on October the 4th of 2015, um, almost an identical issue to what that specific case is in Pennsylvania has already been ruled on. Cincinnati, a federal judge ruled that a Southern Ohio City inspections of rental properties without a warrant are unconstitutional. Federal judge ruled that Southern Ohio City's inspections of rental properties without a warrant are unconstitutional. The U.S. District Judge Susan Dlott agreed last week with property owners who last sued the Ohio River City of Portsmouth contending that the city's rental dwelling code violated their constitutional protections to due process and against unreasonable searches by forcing them to allow inspections without warrants describing probable cause. Court documents show that city officials explained that much of Portsmouth's housing stock dates to post World War II construction and the wave of foreclosings during the Great Recession resulted in many old homes sitting vacant for long periods then being converted into rental properties. City officials said many families are living in unsafe unsanitary conditions so a new rental dwelling code adopted in 2012 required buying rental permits and allowing inspections. So I'm not going to go on with this specific article but I want to say first of all it is not only unconstitutional when has it ever been in any of the Constitution where you're talking state or whether you're talking federal show me where it is that they are supposed to regulate whether somebody is safe or not It is not the government's job to keep anybody safe it is their job to protect our 
liberties and our unalienable rights. So let's get that clear. I'm going to pull up really quickly right here is the actual official case on that with the order if you wanted to look that up. I will provide links in the description box below as promised. Another great source for finding information like this and they also help individuals as well is the 1851 Center for Constitutional Law. The 1851 Center for Const Constitutional Law reported about this October the 1st, 2015 and they have a great write-up about that which will also be included of course in the description box below. So earlier today after I was researching that I made a phone call and I'm going to let you hear the phone call in which I spoke to the Institute of Justice. Good morning, Institute for Justice. Um, yes, may I speak to Shira Rowlandson, please? Can I get your name? Yes, Lori Anderson. Is she expecting your call? No, ma'am. Actually, I'll kind of let you know what it's about. I call cases in the different cases because I am an independent investigative journalist, but I also um, work with a group called Courtroom Observers, so I check out your current cases that are going on. And I noticed one of the cases that she is handling is about the Pennsylvania ten tenants and landlord challenge, the unconstitutional inspections. And I was wondering, I was actually calling to kind of give her <clears throat> a tidbit of information. I didn't know if she had it. Um, but Ohio uh, had already previously ruled in 2015 that that was unconstitutional and it was in a higher court. So I wanted to give that to her to kind of help her out with her case. <laughs> So that might actually be, uh, I might actually be able to connect you with one of our attorneys. Okay. Um, because that'll be more within their realm. Okay. Um, so if you can put you on hold for a moment. Sure. Mm -hmm. <coughs> this is Shara. Hi, Shara. How are you doing today, dear? Good. How are you? I'm doing well. Doing well. Um, I was calling. First of all, my name is Lori Anderson. And I am an independent investigative journalist, but I'm also connected with a group that does courtroom observation in order to hold individuals accountable, make constitutionally. So what I have done is I noticed of your um, <clears throat> cases, the one in Pennsylvania, Finance and Landlord Challenge. Yes. Okay. I did not know if you were aware, but this is one of the things that I do when I see cases and find information to be able to get to individuals to help them out in um, cases. Are you aware that in 2015 the federal court ruled that that was unconstitutional? What, um, in where? In Ohio. Um, I, I probably am sure we were aware of it. Okay. I was going to um, just address that with you and, and let you know that because I wanted to help out. Um, I am pro unalienable rights <laughs> and pro um, stopping the unconstitutional issues that are going on. Would you like me to email you um, a copy of that uh, information case? I'm sure. Yeah, I can pass along to our attorneys okay. who are working on the case. That'd be great. And uh, would, I, would I send that email to the SRA Willinson at I? Okay. Yeah, that's my email. Okay. I will send those copies and that information to you. And now I have another question for you as well. Um, do you, I saw that you cover different things with the land issues and stuff also. Mm -hmm. Are y'all aware of the UN Agenda 21? Um, I think so. Okay. Because a lot of the way that these, because I was reading the case, the mayor and what he was doing with the um, trying to use the eminent domain and stuff like that. It screams of you in Agenda 21. Um, a lot of these individuals that are mayors and different things end up being connected to the Rockefeller Foundation and they receive grants. And under the condition of receiving the grant, these individuals have to be able to have a um, 
a say in what goes on communities. And um, so what happens is uh, a really good thing, just in case you're not aware, um, check to see if there's any financial ties when it comes to um, grants and motivation that's connected with, they, they use different, um, uh, they use different uh, terminology. They, they will use you in Agenda 21. They'll use it under the guise of ICLEI um, mm -hmm. and subcategories under different names, sustainable development and stuff like that. And they're using that. But to, to get the basis of you in Agenda 21, you can actually get that off the United Nations website. And it's happening all across the United States of America, actually, to kick people off of um, uh, their properties and pushing them basically kind of like herding them like cattle to a certain area that they want them to be. Um, <clears throat> and um, the UN Agenda 21 map that was exposed that stopped it uh, for a little while anyway um, on the congressional level, that would be the Wildlands Project map. And you'll be able to see actually the, the mapping of the lands that they wanted and where they wanted to push the people and all of that. That was expect, uh, in Congress. Now, um, if you need me for anything, I know you don't know me. <laughs> I'm easy to research, though. Um, but if you, if you need me for anything or more information on any of these uh, type of cases, um, I will be, you know, glad to help out in any manner as far as sending you cases and stuff that I know about and for information. But I would definitely search and see if that mayor on that specific case, if that mayor has connections with ICLEI or um, uh, a quote-unquote sustainable development program. A lot of the sustainable development programs actually are implemented through the ICLEI and which, of course, is the UN Agenda 21 on the local level because what happened when it was exposed on the national level people threw a fit because they found out what was really going on so what they did was they started implementing it by um, getting people who were on community boards and stuff infiltrating into the lower levels I know that sounds really crazy but it really is the truth um, and to implement policies which would help push that agenda Okay. Yeah. No, definitely. So I appreciate it. Not a problem. And it was really nice talking to you, really nice meeting you. And I'll send you an email later this evening uh, with that information so that you okay. can have a hold of that. And right. Thank um, you so much. You're very welcome. You have a blessed day. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. Here's a copy and provided proof that I followed up as per the phone conversation earlier when I spoke with... Shira with the Institute of Justice. I sent her this email provided with links to the Supreme Court or to the court decisions below involved in the email. If I get any updates, I will let you know as far as what is going on with this case. As always, let's be part of the solution. We can be part of the solution without actually physically going to the courts we can actually help by individuals who are in the courts fighting for other people's unalienable rights which of course will help us in the fight for ours just join together in the cause and help anybody and everybody that you think that you might have information to be able to help them win those cases and as always watch your backs check your facts and for Fidelis and have a wonderful night